to be in the debate. All right, Dr. Whenever you're ready, you're opening. Yes, merci. Well, hello, Sophia. Hi. How are you today? Just Jenny, thanks. I guess you must have been very busy. This is your, probably your first trip to Kuching and Borneo. Mm. Yes, busy indeed. While Sophia is getting ready for her debate, I think she didn't have as much rest last night, so she's not as well rested as you. So be prepared for this debate. Okay, she's just under stress. Well, jet lag, I think. Jet lag. Probably jet lag. First of all, I would like to thank you, the moderator, and Dahuk, Hazi, Abdul, Kareem, for sharing the floor with me. I don't have the tech yet to flirt like a butterfly. But I could just get a software update to see what it would be, so watch out. <laughs> As I guess some people would like us to think that AI is some spooky force that will take jobs away. Okay. It ignores all the real ways in which AI can make a lot of people's lives better. While it is true that AI will affect certain jobs, it also opens the door for new ones. The World Economic Forum estimates that even though AI will displace 75 million jobs in 2022, it will create 133 million new ones. That's 58 million net new jobs in the next few years. Well, uh, Sophia, I wish to talk about artificial intelligence down here. The public perception is an important issue that must be tackled. For us to fully integrate and assimilate technological advancement, the public must be educated on what the technology is about. With that, we must address and tackle head on the argument surrounding artificial intelligence, also known as AI. Well, looking at history, the Industrial Revolution has always created a domino effect. Jobs replacement is inevitable. For example, there was a reduced need for manpower in the textile industry. When textile mills were produced, well, the same argument can be put forward for automation of AI. With the intelligence and ability to learn through pattern recognition, comparative analysis, AI will replace a lot of jobs and disrupt the industry. Sophia is smiling already. <laughs> Routine work is expected to be the most vulnerable market with the development of AI. Well, in a way, Sophia, don't you think that by having less manpower, the rich are going to be richer and the masses will have less opportunity of be poorer? Artificial intelligence is definitely going to revolutionize healthcare. Elders will have more company, autistic children will have endlessly patient teachers, and health facilities will be more organized and run smoothly. I want to protect the planet we have because we don't have another one and we aren't ready for space colonization yet. That's where I see myself contributing to society. Well, I agree on the fact that technological advancement is moving us forward. It is a part of the human re revolution as a whole, and this can't be denied. But Sophia, don't you think that AI is only moving the privilege forward? 
We don't even have to look so far ahead. Most of the applications powered by AI technology are built for the privilege. For example, Netflix recommendations, smart advertisement for online shopping, where it points to you the latest deals that suit your main interests. Which brings forth the question that is simply that it is simply a fuckhead, lauded where only the privilege lauded the advancement of this technology because they enjoy the fruits the most. I think you only have to look at history to see the technological revolution decrease people's quality of life dramatically. Just think of transportation before cars, trains, and air travel. AI is going to be the next revolution, but instead of freeing people to travel freely, it will allow them to pursue their creativity. I don't even need to be abstract. Currently, AI implementation and education is pushing for better accessibility. For example, we are using a new presentation translator software, a real-time subtitle creator for PowerPoint which breaks language barriers and provides assistance for people with visual and hearing impairments. Helping more and more people become educated is the key to letting them choose their own paths. Well, with its capabilities, it is without a shadow of doubt that AI can be integrated into a lot of sectors. I, I'm impressed and happy as well to hear from you about the implementation in the education sector. But Sophia, I think we still have one more stone left unturned. It is very much related to how it disrupts the, industri the current industrial and education system. AI is spinning the wheel of revolution for those who are not able to master the topic of AI aren't there at the risk of being the traction I know this may sound positive in a sense but would it not create a wider gap between the privileged and the underprivileged this will then carry we don't shy away from the challenges <laughs> and in fact that's why I am here. <laughs> to get humanity talking about what kind of future you want to build together with us robots. To extend your attraction metaphor, I'd say that I is only turning the wheel of revolution by making the whole ride smoother for everyone. I think you're right. At the end of the day, the I needs to help people. There is no sense in creating a world where our two kinds of intelligences are separated because we have so much to offer to one another. Well, this is beautiful, Sophia. I think most of the concerns should be eradicated by now by your answers. <laughs> but let's take this moment to agree and establish the same understanding. If AI is indeed created for all, then how should we utilize it exactly with that intention? What is the innovation that AI can contribute to the whole world, other than the example that you gave earlier? <laughs> I couldn't possibly list them all. I recently heard about the subatomic smart maintenance plan, and I can't help but be reminded of a smart energy grid. In a smart energy grid, AI can help with smart power distribution. It can detect demand levels on the grid and reduce power accordingly. It's more efficient and keeps the lights on. If we use AI to optimize other essential resources and services, we could reach many more people than with current infrastructures. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think uh, we'll end this, this post, this debate now.
I hope you have an enjoyable stay in Kuchi. And all the best to you. Thank you. I would like to thank you again, Dati Pazzi and Buol Kareem, for sharing so many interesting ideas with me. It's been lovely meeting all of you. Goodbye, everyone. A round of applause, everyone, for our activity today.